tuned into Quick Charge, the high voltage podcast bringing you the top stories in electric vehicles and sustainable energy daily. And it's all powered by electric. Welcome to Quick Charge. It's October 7th, 2024, and I'm your host, Joe Boris. If you've been following Quick Charge the last few days, you know we've been trying some things a little bit differently. Mainly, we've been bringing guests on the show to talk about different aspects of different stories that we're covering. Some get more in-depth than others, but overall, it's been generally well-received. And today, hopefully, is going to be no different. But I will tell you that if you don't want to talk about absolutely massive bananas, vehicles, and incredibly forward-thinking battery technology, you are in the wrong place. Because this story actually starts nearly two years ago, all the way back in January of 2023, just after the CES show, when the heavy equipment giants at Liebherr announced a 240-ton electric mining haul truck that could charge in 30 minutes. Now, this was state-of-the-art, cutting edge in 2023, and it's still pretty impressive today. But Fortescue, the company this truck was built for, has been driving even further. So even though they've had a 1.4 megawatt hour battery pack that they said they could charge in 30 minutes, that is not where they stopped. And just last week, they announced a $4 billion investment with a 1.9 kilowatt hour battery that takes up the same amount of space as the old 1.4 as shown in the concept, and charges even quicker thanks to a six megawatt DC fast charging system. Now, there's nothing else like this in the world. This was jointly developed by Fortescue and Liebherr. The six megawatt DC fast charger is twice as fast as the three megawatt prototype that they originally showed back in 2023. That was just a small part of this $4 billion program that the two companies announced at Mine Expo last week. The money there is eventually going to pay for 475 zero emission Liebherr machines with a breakdown of 360 autonomous battery electric trucks like that haul truck, 55 electric excavators, and 60 battery powered loaders. The big news, though, has to be that game changing six megawatt charger. Quote from them. Fortescue has developed the stationary fast charging solution to support the autonomous battery electric truck, the company said last week. Equipped with robotic connection options, the charger can provide up to six megawatts of power and charge the current battery electric T264, that same 240 ton rigid haul truck, in just 30 minutes. Now, that also means that they can charge all kinds of equipment much, much faster than we've been able to do so before. So when we talk about things like the Volvo EC230, when we talk about equipment like Caterpillar's mining trucks that need a couple of hours to charge, that's all gone. And they don't have anywhere near a battery of this size. They'll be able to quick charge in just a few minutes. And I actually did the math on this. I'll post this in the show notes that if you put this into a Chevy Bolt, assuming it could take that kind of juice, you could charge the battery in about 38 seconds. So this is just a ton of energy. And when we found out that we'd have the opportunity to talk to Fortescue's chief commercial officer, Andrew Carlisle, we obviously couldn't wait to have him on the show. So without further ado, here we are with chief commercial officer of Fortescue Zero, Andrew Carlisle. This was recorded last week before the embargo on that deal broke so uh here we go already in progress all right um yeah so kind of a fun introduction we've already been talking for a little bit here so uh really excited to have andrew carlisle on today he's the managing director of the mobility business at fortescue zero andrew you're calling in all the way from the uk thank you so much for being on the show no no thanks so much thanks for having me really looking forward to the conversation joe well, as soon as you said that you actually listened to this show, I became immediately terrified because like nobody <laughs> should be forced to listen to my nonsense. I appreciate your uh, willingness to put yourself through that. <laughs> uh, I think you have some great conversations. So I, I look forward to be part of the dialogue. The original impetus for uh, putting this show together was the announcement at Mine Expo last week, the massive purchase of uh, the Lieber equipment from Fortescue, uh, which I keep trying to say Fortescue, but I know it's Fortescue, so I apologize for that if I get it wrong. But that's a multi-billion dollar investment in some really massive zero emission machinery. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, no, of course. So, I mean, I think firstly, we're very fortunate to have a chairman that is incredibly passionate about decarbonisation. He he really wants to make a difference and a difference to the world. So he's committed to the entire company that we're going to do real zero by 2030. So not net zero, real zero by 2030. 
And as part of that, essentially, we are decarbonizing the entire mine operation. So every single piece of equipment you can imagine on that mine site will be electrified and decarbonized in some way. So the announcement, there were kind of two, well, there were a couple of announcements that happened last week, but particularly the Lee Bear announcement last week was really around the core mine hold truck, which is the, the Lee Bear T264 and the electric power system around that. So it's a huge deal for us and there's a huge amount of engineering effort that goes into that truck and the integration of that power system to that truck, but they will get into the mine site and will we'll really start to help decarbonize the operation. So incredibly exciting for us. Well, the other thing that's really exciting about this is you guys are one of the few companies that is truly going to a, a, a zero carbonization plan. Like that's the goal. You're not talking about buying carbon credits or offsets or anything. You are truly trying to decarbonize. So hats off to you on that. The announcement from this morning, the Fortescue Zero Marine Battery Pack, that's something that you guys are manufacturing yourselves out of the new Advanced Manufacturing Center in Detroit. And I think this is huge because not only are Fortescue mining the materials in a sustainable and low carbon way, but you're also going to be manufacturing them in that way and distributing them in that way. Yeah, so look, de decarbonization is is really important to us, full stop, right? Let's be clear. And if we can help customers around the world decarbonize, we're there to help them, right? So, you know, whilst we are absolutely um, kind of committed to decarbonization in heavy industry and the mining sector particularly, you know, we want to also take those products and solutions more broadly across other mobility kind of businesses. So where I sit is really kind of leading the mobility business units. That's anything from high performance automotive through to the leisure industry, right all the way through to big industrial kind of cl class eight, class six trucks, right? So that's where full spectrum. So we really want to kind of make a difference and we're really kind of pushing. One of the key messages you'll hear our chairman talking about all, all the time is the power of now. You don't have to wait. There are solutions available. So it's get on with it, stop the excuses um, and really get on with it. So you mentioned the high performance automotive, you mentioned the leisure space, but this announcement from this morning is specific to the marine industry. And we have seen, you know, a couple of luxury boats, luxury yachts, Volvo Penta drivetrains coming out that are capable of electric drive, but this is a marine battery pack. How is a marine battery pack distinct from an on-road or, uh, you know, a best energy storage battery pack? What makes it different? Yeah. So, well, I think first and foremost, you know, we we feel there is huge growth potential for electrification in the marine space and in the leisure marine craft. So huge growth coming. Very much a consumer driven industry. Right. So people want to make a difference. People want to decarbonize. But what we've created then is a solution that is versatile and adaptable to go into those boats, right? We're, we're not just taking an automotive battery and putting it into a boat. We're thinking about the use case and developing a battery that works for boats, right? So, and we've got a great partner uh, called Evoa Propulsion. Evoa understands this market really well and has great relationships with a number of the major OEMs across, across the North America and in Europe. So we're really trying to partner with them to make sure that we can deliver this high voltage marine battery and make sure it's fit for purpose for that industry. I think that's a really good distinction because you're talking about Evoa and the powertrain and they're obviously capable of more than a thousand horsepower and ungodly amounts of torque right off the line. You know, with the right yeah. propeller design, this thing's going to come right up out of the water and get moving. But it's important to note here that you guys are producing battery power for the drive unit where other battery solutions for leisure boats and luxury boats have focused on replacing the g smaller generator that yep. drives the accessories, that drives the house lighting and electrical equipment and refrigerators and things like that. So is your marine battery pack effectively replacing both of those systems or are you focusing on the drive specifically? Uh, it, it'll replace all of it. So it'll be the drive and all the entertainment systems or whatever else you have on that boat. We, we're really looking to replace it all. Uh, and he, in the end of the day, if you replace the drivetrain, that's where the core of your emissions come from, right? So we really want to kind of make a difference to decarbonization, as I keep talking about. So it's important to us. So that's the core focus. And so that's why we're really going after that. It's not particularly a great answer, Joe, but I gave my best shot there. No, I think that's a solid answer. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, we'll go with that. Not here's yeah. here's why I think it's a solid answer, right? Because 
when you talk to a Brunswick Marine, and let's go back to uh, CES 2022, when I talked to those guys and, and interviewed them, right? This is one of my first interviews for Electric. They were very adamant that energizing and electrifying the drive unit, while that was beneficial, was at the end of the day, inefficient use of a limited resource in batteries. And what they were focusing on instead was replacing that generator with the battery pack, which is why that's always at the front of my mind. And what they talked about was that those generators, whether they're propane or diesel, were effectively unregulated emissions and that the carbon emissions there were actually significantly worse than you might think, you know, pound for pound, horsepower to horsepower than the drive unit, which mm. is one of those answers that probably pencils out and mm. might be correct and might be technically correct, right? Mm -hmm. Which, as we all know, is yep. the best kind of correct, but it's an yep. unsatisfying response. So even though your answer may not be the one that you wanted to hear, and it may not be that 30 second soundbite that gets everybody to electrify, it's a much more satisfying response to say like, Look, this thousand horsepower engine is the one making all the emissions. That's the one we have to electrify. Yeah. So, like, thank you for saying it. Well, and I think more than that, you know, when I was a, a young kid, I grew up in Miami. So we were around boats all the time. And one of the things that always struck me, and I'm talking about four years old, five years old, I vividly remember that sheen of oil on the top of the water at the, the water. marina. Yeah, yeah. And it was like a rainbow kind of purple yeah. and hazy thing. And I, used to look at that and i used to think it was beautiful and now knowing what i know now i should have been horrified yeah. i should have been absolutely horrified at what i was seeing but i'll ask you a question in this way throughout europe we're starting to see certain lakes especially freshwater lakes implementing no internal combustion engine bands or internal combustion engine bands and pushing those motors and those boats out of the lake to preserve that environmental kind of aspect of it, to preserve the wildlife, to preserve the fishing game. We are starting to see some of that in Canada. We're starting to see some of that in uh, California and certain lakes. Do you anticipate seeing more and more of that regulation? Or do you simply think that people who live on the water don't want oil and diesel and gross fuel in the water? Mm -hmm. I think it'd probably be a bit of both, Joe, in full transparency. So I think regulation will come and it needs to come and needs to come faster. So I think there will be regulation. But I also think that consumers are starting to understand the importance of climate change and the importance to, to protect the environmental environment around us. Right. So I do think that consumers will continue to get more and more invested into these decarb challenges and these decarb uh, solutions that are available. So, you, you know, we, we believe that with Evoa, right, you have the ability to have a completely clean uh, powertrain solution for these electric vessels and actually have performance that's equivalent or even to some cases better than the existing kind of internal con combustion engine solutions. The other thing, Joe, is that when you've got these kind of clean solutions, you can change the way you use them too. Right. So rather than feeling like you have to then kind of take your your boat at the in your in your lake house at the end of your garden to a pontoon to go and refuel up for the weekend, you have the ability to put a charger at the end of your garden. You charge up your boat. You don't have to go anywhere. So it, it gives you the opportunity to kind of from a consciousness, you're looking after the environment around you. But it also simplifies and makes you know, makes your user experience much better, too. So we're we're, we're very excited to partner with Eva on this. All of this is going to be coming out of a new manufacturing facility that is in Detroit. Obviously, it, from the American folklore, stuff gets built in Detroit. That's where engines come from. It's the Motor City, right? So you guys manufacturing these power packs effectively where for the last hundred years we've been building horsepower, I, I think is symbolically significant. As a Australian company, as someone from the UK, as a Brit, if you will, <laughs> um, <laughs> does Fortescue buy into, uh, does Fortescue buy into that myth and do they see themselves kind of 
reinvigorating and and adding to that mythology or yeah. you know was it something boring like tax incentives that led you there? no no not at all i mean yes we've got a good tax incentive plan from detroit and we, you know the michigan team so that's incredibly great too you know and i don't want to underplay that they were they're incredibly supportive of us coming to there but equally we want to be part of the detroit rena- renaissance right we do we absolutely want to be there the facility that we're we've, we're establishing is next to where the model t was first manufactured Right, oh, so cool. it, it, it's great to see that kind of that that change and that revival of the industry in a completely different way. And so, and the reason that we want to come to Detroit is a lot of our US based, a lot of our customers are in the US and they're looking for made in America solutions and we want to be there for them. Right. So, what we're incredibly excited about here is that this uh, high energy marine pack is the first of many. Right. It, it really is the first product to utilize our scalable battery module technology, which allows us to really create scalable and customized solutions for a whole raft of applications in mobility. Right. So this is it's a great launch pad for us, Joe, but this is just the start. So we're incredibly excited about putting our roots down properly in Detroit. I love it. Andrew, we're coming to the end of our time commitment here. I want to be respectful of that. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I hope it's only your first appearance and it'll be the first of many. Uh, looks like production at your new for, for to, uh, it looks like production Whiskey. at your new Fortescue Zero <laughs> facility <laughs> is expected to begin uh, Q4 of next year. Uh, hopefully many more announcements between now and then. For people who are interested in what you guys are doing and want to follow the company's efforts at decarbonization, what's the best way for them to follow along and reach out to you? Well, I think certainly kind of the LinkedIn channel is amazing, right? So LinkedIn and our website is amazing. So there's lots of videos and posts that go up there at the progress we're making. And there's lots of progress, uh, Joe. So whether that be the mine hall truck, whether it be an, an infinity electric train, uh, you know, a huge amount of growth, as well as solutions that you know we're deploying we're incredibly excited about these scalable solutions that I'm talking to you about today and really putting our, down our roots in, in in kind of in Detroit. We believe these solutions can really help high performance automotive, leisure and marine customers, right? So, and uh, we're certainly here to help. Please, if any, if any listener or anybody wants to kind of reach out to me, they're more than welcome anytime, right? So please connect and I'd love to talk to you and see how we can help you decarbonize. Fantastic. We'll put all of your uh, personal contact information, social security number, and bank (laughs) accounts online. And uh, yeah, thanks for being on the show. Once again, that was Andrew Carlisle, Chief Commercial Officer for Fortescue. Thank you so much for being on the show. If there's a guest that you'd like us to interview, somebody from the world of electrification, from EVs, from heavy equipment that you'd like to hear from, please let us know in the comments. We'll do everything we can to get them on the show. That's all we've got for today, October 7th. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one.